budget angler here just out on the um, chalk stream I'm just trying to shield from the wind I'll give you a quick look just so you can see one of my one of my usual favorite spots doing something a little bit different today fishing the link ledger but I'm not using the quiver tip I'm using an old-fashioned fairy liquid top well not an old-fashioned one the modern ones and I just wanted to sort of to test them out and see if you can modify the modern washing up liquid bottle tops um, as a bite indicator um, which I'll uh, I'll show you that in a second on the GoPro um, just just that and it's a it's just a it's just a fairy liquid top with um it's got two two p pieces sellotaped into it or electrical taped into it um just for a little bit of extra weight because storm eunice came through yesterday and i was expecting a few more fallen trees around here but there aren't any um touch woods no you know no, no damage that i'm aware of to to me or anyone i know um a few fence panels down locally and a new block of flats had its roof blown off um near where i live um, but I mean, I don't know why they'd put they'd, all the other sort of buildings in this site had tiles. For whatever reason, they put felt, they felt roof this block of flats. And um, yeah, that's gone now. So uh, yeah, so I don't know if it was occupied or not, to be honest, because it was very, very, very new. But the water was really up high. Um, you can see that. It's, it's considering we haven't actually had a lot of rain in storm units. I never understand how this stream works. Sometimes I've been here after tons and tons of rain and it's low. And then this week, it's, it's been relatively dry, to be honest. Um, and the water's really high so i'm not really sure you know maybe there's sort of water management there are water works for upstream and downstream so i don't know if they sort of manage it um totally sort of, you know unnaturally if you like where it, the, 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 it's not really the, the rain fault that, that dictates the level it's uh, the sluices and things like that for the water but it's really really windy um i mean it's nothing obviously like compared to yesterday, like yesterday but uh yeah i mean on that train oh that was the wind um, but yeah, anyway, I'm waffling on. Uh, it's freezing cold as well. That wind is biting, and I'm glad I put my thermals on. I've got a nice hot flask of tea. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed we can get a couple of the fish. There's some really nice. I know there's some nice chub in here. There's perch and there's roach. There are also a few trout, as as you well know. Um, I'm just fit at the moment. I've got corn and maggots with me, and I'm just trying maggots for now, and we'll see if we can get a fish. Well, that's the setup there, guys. As you can see, there's the uh, fairy liquid top. It's got a couple of two piece just taped in there, just for a bit of weight, extra weight. Um, I'm I'm fishing the fishing the centre pin, um, which I've never really used for ledgering, to be honest. I've got floats with me in that, and I've kind of I've got a normal reel as well, just in case. It's so windy, and the wind's blowing kind of sort of that way, um, sort of 45 degrees to the angle of the rod. Um, and so it's it's just horrible for uh, for for casting with the centre pin, because when you you know that. As soon as you let out a bit of slack, um, even as the weight, even as you're casting, it's uh, the line's blowing everywhere. Um, so we'll see, but I'll persevere with it, and hopefully we'll get a fish. Because touch wood, I've never blanked uh, from this stretch unless I've been fly fishing. So uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll live in hope. <laughs> There you go, guys. A tiny little trout there. I thought it was actually a gudgeon. That didn't even indicate a bite. I was just about to recast. So, uh, yeah, it's tough, tough going. Another pale little spotty trout there. That was just on on the maggot. That again didn't pull the bite indicator. Just just rattled the rod tip. But they're so small. Uh, we're going to persevere for a while longer and see if um, see if any of these roach show up um, with the corn or the maggot, and then I'll go on to the float maybe. Another tiny little trout there, guys. Um, yeah, I, I'm just played with them in this swim. I'm going to give it one more cast, then move down a bit. Well, we're not quite at Blue Peter, guys, but let's take a look at, um, at sort of some of these fairy liquid bottles as they are today. Um, I'll just put a little picture up now of the ones that um, you know that you that you would have used, and I used to use where well, they had like a little loop around. But yeah, just check those out. And of course, these ones now, they're totally different. I mean, when you shut them, they sit. Well, I've modified that one already, but this is this is an unmodified one, and they sit sort of. You can just see there the actual hinge is there, 
and they sit completely flat, they clamp to the line. I mean, if you needed to peg that to something or clamp it to something, then that might work. But obviously for the purposes of a bite indicator, you want the line to be able to run through there freely, um, but, but obviously lift up to indicate a bite, but we'll see that out on the bank, fingers crossed. So this is one I have used loads actually. Um, I don't know if I've, I think I have used it in videos, but I didn't really make much of a thing of it just because I wasn't really thinking about it really. Um, you know, fairy liquid bottle, I kind of just took it for granted, but just modified it without even thinking. And what I did was just with a little, little very fine file, just filed out a groove in that, that sort of bit there. There's like, um, sort of the back of the hinge, you can see there the, the grooves and just, just, just with a, a fine file, file that out. You've got a bit of flashing around there. Um, and where these things tend to tend to break now, like I suppose with the old fashioned ones, the hinge goes. So that's actually only only attached on that side there, not there. So um, eventually this will break. But I think even if the hinge does break, this will actually still clip on, and that will still be flush enough and tight enough. And I don't I don't think that unless you're using an extremely fine line, I wouldn't have thought anything would get caught in there um, in that little hole. So yeah, um, and they've actually, I don't know if you can, I don't know if that's coming out on the picture, oh, there, but they've actually changed them already, this is, this is the one I've been using, it's old, I probably made, actually cut those grooves in about two years ago, ages ago, um, de bef definitely before the pandemic, and uh, this one um, is like a, a totally opaque plastic, where this one's slightly translucent, and you can get a bit of light through it, um, but they're totally the same design, but I mean, you know, they, they could change again. There, oh, <laughs> skills. There's, um, that's it actually on the bottle. That's what it looks like. It's just a fairy liquid top. Um, but yeah, so I, I mean, I guess these are cheaper to manufacture. Although there's more plastic in this than there is in the old ones, definitely. Um, so I don't know, you know, it does make you wonder sort of, you know, where it all sort of goes wrong, really, because. I would well I'd imagine there's more plastic in this than the old ones because that was a much smaller opening with just a little cap on the top but anyway um it is what it is and, and so I'll, I'll get to I'm um, showing you how to modify the one that's unmodified I'm just going to do it in a slightly different way and I just want to add um because while I'm going out so at the moment as I film this storm oh blimey it's escaped me storm uh Barry Brian? No, Dudley. Storm Dudley um, is sweeping the UK and it's really, really windy. And and but so in the, there's another one. I think I forgot the name of the the next storm coming. There's another one coming at the weekend, and um, I hope it's blown through. But if it is really windy, to kind of combat that, these two peas will add as like ballast for them, and they fit in really well. So if you've just got a bit of bit of blue tack, bit of double sided tape, maybe just pop them in and. Uh, you know, really increase the weight of that. And obviously, you know, you can increase or decrease that with, with the tuppences as you go. And that will just obviously combat combat the wind a bit. And where I'm going, um, uh, you know, I'm gonna be trying to catch some, some chub, but I know there's some trout in the little stretch as well. So it's not the sort of place where you're gonna get little pluck bites. Um, if anything, it's gonna go, especially this time of year now, it's getting on towards spring, they're gonna be on the feed mega. And so you'd, you'd hope they would be quite positive bites and just, you know, grab it and run. Um, but yeah, so we'll, so we'll give that a go. And um, I might have already explained all that, but I'm filming this before I've gone out, obviously, and I haven't filmed the intro. So uh, if there's any inconsistencies or incoherencies, that's why. But what we'll do now is we'll just, um, we'll just modify a groove in there. There is actually a difference there, actually, guys, and I've just noticed that um, this is actually going to be more difficult to do, in fact, because if you, I don't know if that's, if you can see that there, but there, that's a complete void, and there, there's like a bit of strength in there, so maybe this new plastic's a bit weaker, um, but I think we should be able to put the line, the groove there, and basically, you, you don't want to break through this, because then, then the line will sort of could get caught under the top you want to you want a nice clean hole there it only has to be a you know a millimeter mill and a half just to let the line run through we'll give that a go i suppose the proof will be in the pudding and we'll, we'll take these out and uh and give them a go so what i'm going to do instead of filing it out i'm just going to warm this nail up um in i'm 
I would be holding these with pliers, but this is I couldn't find any. And this is um some 99p store um side cutters that I got. Um this was in the Chingford branch 99p store in about 2007. Don't ask me how I remember that, but I do. And I, that's, you know you're getting old when stores have come and gone in your lifetime. So 99p stores turned up and they've gone out of business now, bought out by Poundland. So I'm just going to warm the nail up with a lighter, get it nice and hot, and that'll, you know, this is going to take seconds to do. I mean, I'm making this look hand-fisted by chatting away, but um, we'll just melt two little, two little holes, and hopefully it doesn't stick to the nail and whatnot, but we've got the little file there that we can... Um, clean it up we just need a little tiny just a little groove or little slot that the line can run through so i'm just holding it under at the bottom of the um flame in the in the blue bit while it's not quite as hot there it is less soot in that bit of the flame and so it's not going to blacken the nail as much not that it really makes any difference whatsoever but it'll just look a little bit neater when you melt the groove um so yeah that or this nail is a sort of quite a thick nail um because i hadn't anticipated that little extra bit of plastic in the um in the hinge there so i was just going to sort of just cut quite a nice thick groove especially for sort of illustrative purpose on this video but um that's obviously not to be but yeah hopefully that nail is warm enough now i would have thought oh, i would start glowing by now but it hasn't quite but let's have a go mm. yeah lovely And that's it, guy. I mean, simple as that. You can see that that groove there. There's a little bit of flashing come off there, but I can just file that away. And then when you shut that, hopefully you can see that. You can just see the light reflecting off the table through that hole. And that's where your line's going to run through, and that's your bite indicator. Um, so what we'll do is we'll get down at the bank on the bank at this weekend and see if we can give them a go. Well, as you can probably tell, guys, I've gone onto the float. Another tiny little trout. Um, it's getting quite frustrating now. Um, but yeah, the wind just just howling along and was not not doing anything for uh, for the um, for using that bite indicator. But yeah, I'm going to persevere with the float. And uh, I know it's there's a great 95% chance of rain on my next on the um, on the weather app. So uh, yeah, um, I've got my waterproofs with me, but I might go and shelter under the flyover. There is a little swim under there. Well, a slightly better trout. Oh, this is a better fish. I bet it's a trout. And I've got to try and get it around this snag, which is... Well, I don't know how I've managed that. I've got him over the top of it. Oh, it's a lovely dark one though. Lovely trout. This just got a hole in his back there, and I've seen a heron wandering around. So I don't know if he's been got by a heron, maybe just laying up in a slack somewhere, and a heron's come down, or maybe even a cormoran. Although I think they struggle to take off here. Oh. 
God, he's going mad. Oh, this wind. <laughs> it's got the net now. Another beautiful trout. They're absolutely gorgeous fish, aren't they? And the variation in colours you get here is really something else, really something to behold, to be honest. This one's very, very iridescent and it's quite silvery. And the other ones have been very dark browns and blues. Cracking little fish. Well, guys, I'm going to call it a day. Um, as if you can hear me over there. It, uh, it's just horrible. It's just been an absolutely horrible day fishing. Uh, better than being stuck indoors, but yeah, uh, not great at all. Um, I'll, I'll film a proper outro when I get home, I think, because I am freezing. Well, home now, guys. I think really we can call that experiment with the um, the bottle tops a bit of a failure, to be honest. Or not really a failure, but um, conditions didn't present themselves conducive for my expected hypothesis. Maybe, um, yeah. That basically, I think need to try that again uh, on a on a less windy day um, when I've got a bit more patience to actually uh, sit there and not wander about. Because when it's cold and windy like that, I like roaming around you just can keep that little bit warmer move around stand up stamp your feet but sat on that little folding stool waiting for that bottle top to ping up um didn't feel didn't feel great although better than being stuck inside and i'll take a day out fishing in terrible conditions any day uh, um over uh over a day sat indoors um yeah um i i mean i can't remember i was going to say something else but anyway I've, I've defrosted a bit and sort of a bit less wind blasted it really turned bitterly cold out there like unexpectedly cold to be honest it's been a really mild winter um you know it's been it's been you know exceptionally mild to be honest so i don't think i was used to it and wasn't expecting it um and i think that wind was just biting absolutely yeah and you know when you're just out fishing you think what am i doing you know what on earth am i doing out here um and it's going to be even worse tomorrow and i'm really gutted because i really wanted to go fly fishing tomorrow on the village pond but the wind is just going to be atrocious so um i might not go out fishing tomorrow and it's a day that i could which is um shameful to be honest but i'll, I'll i won't do nothing fish non-fishing related i'll probably tie some flies and maybe start on some floats um ready for next weekend because we've, we've only got weeks now until the season's closed so i need to get a bit of fly casting practice in for tackling um the trout when that season opens and um b i just need to get out and, and fish more i just don't know where the year's gone the last couple of years just seem to have flown by with this pandemic and it just it just feels like the close season's on us every couple of minutes every couple of minutes um let alone months it's a yeah it's a nightmare but anyway that's it is what it is um so there'll be a video there's always a video don't worry there'll be a video next week um i'll i'll uh, i'll get out there and, and get something um so yeah really that just leads me to say thank you very much for watching guys if you have enjoyed that please hit that thumbs up please consider dropping me a sub if you've not already i do get a lot of unique viewers to my videos so um if a few of you subscribed i'd be much much obliged because that's kind of like the the measure that us youtubers use to measure our success strangely i don't know why um and it does help other people find the videos so uh yeah Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys. Fish on.